This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Shanta. Shanta is an entertainer, but she also loves to be entertained, which is why she has Flow TV brought to her through Flow's 100% Fiber to the Home Network. It's great for busy Shanta because she can control the time she watches her favorite shows, play back from the start in case she missed it, or even record with cloud video recording. And with her Flow Services bundle, enjoys much more for much less. Visit any Flow retail outlet. Call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. It's Wednesday, July 6th, and this is your Bobby This Day afternoon update. I'm Kmar Jordan. Thanks for joining us. Our top story at this hour, the Barbados Police Association is not happy about the imprisonment of Constable Everton Giddings. In fact, President of the Association, Mervyn Grace, told the annual general meeting of the Association this morning that it's heart-wrenching, frustrating, and demoralizing. Gittins was jailed in April 2015 for the murder of Selwyn Blues Knight at Dash Gap Bank Hall, St. Michael. Grace contends he should be granted bail like any other murder accused. We are highly offended at what the Giddens has been. Highly offended by his incarceration, especially in light of the fact that persons who are accused of murder in this country have been granted bail. Before committing other offenses. They are given conditions, and the same cannot be given for a respected, dedicated, and competent member of the Royal Barbados Police Force. In response, Attorney General Adrian Braffitt, who addressed the officers, suggested he too was puzzled about the treatment of Constable Giddens. If you, for example, can release on bail someone who names himself Lord Evil, I see no reason why you, sh you cannot release Constable Giddens on bail. And I'm not saying that because it sounds good, because the Commission acted with Italian. And I've said on more than one occasion how sad I am that I'm sitting seeing others being released on, on, on bail. And we have this child um, allegedly in a solitary confinement for his own protection. Um, it, it is not a situation that I, that I support, but again, it is not within my power. In other news this Wednesday, Finance Minister Chris Sinclair hints at a possible amnesty for delinquent taxpayers while calling on businesses to pay up their outstanding sums to allow government to fast-track the payment of refunds, he stressed the government has no interest in seeing Barbados businesses go under. But while he's all for being lenient, he's encouraging businesses to work with the government to create a win-win situation. The government over the last two years have had amnesties on top of amnesties, mm -hmm. probably will have some in the future again. Um, but you know the thing with amnesties, um, they become incorrigible. And when people know that an amnesty is coming, they decide uh, okay. uh, I'm not going to pay them away from this ex amnesty. Even though that does not necessarily uh, go them into pain, because the, the day the amnesty comes to close, then somebody calls the next day and says, Well, you didn't know there was an amnesty. <laughs> so we get quite a bit of that taking place. And our job is not to close businesses, our job is to keep businesses open, keep people employed, keep economic activity going. Mr. Sinclair, who was addressing the official opening of the Regus Business Center in War Welch's St. Thomas yesterday, admitted that the process of issuing income tax refunds continued to be slow, as he again appealed for patience. This is reflected in the fact that between April 15th and March 31st, 2016, government paid out roughly $202,254,000 in refunds to Barbadians. Of this amount, the highest $82 million was paid in VAT returns, with another $72 million in income tax returns and $33 million in corporation tax returns. There's regional and international news after this short break. I love it. I love it. I hey, I'm Red Plastic Bag, mentor of the Barbados Today Crop Over Champion Competition. What I like about this competition is the fact that it gives you, the public, a voice in three major competitions for crop over. Pickety Crop, Junior Monarch, and Soka Royale. Go to Barbados Today's Facebook page, click on the tab for the competition you want to vote for, 
then hit vote on your favorite video. It's as simple as that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Special thanks to our sponsors, Flow, Capital Media HD, CGI, the Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union Limited, and the NCF. Continuing with news from the CARICOM Summit, Barbados will lead a study examining whether banks in the region are compliant with international financial guidelines. This in the face of threats by the United States and Europe to end correspondent banking relations with the Caribbean. A document submitted by Barbados' Central Bank Governor Dr. Delal Whirl to the CARICOM leaders now holding their 37th summit in Georgetown, Guyana, says the study will assess the role of small international financial centers in increasing the efficiency of global commerce and the status of Caribbean regulatory legal and risk frameworks. Dr. World says they have also been meeting with the United States Treasury Department and the State Department on the issue. CARICOM warns that if the correspondent banking relations are withdrawn, the region will be isolated from the rest of the world and will be unable to carry out the most basic of bank transactions. On the international scene, a South African judge sentenced Olympic sprinter Oscar Pistorius to six years in prison for the murder of his girlfriend. Pistorius killed Riva Steenkamp at his home in the upscale Pristoria neighborhood in the early hours of Valentine's Day three years ago. A killing, he says, was an accident after he mistook her for an intruder. He was originally sentenced to manslaughter um, in 2014 by the same judge, but after months of hearings, a higher court upgraded the decision to murder last year, leading to this morning's sentencing. The reaction immediately was this is a lighter sentence than many people thought, uh, certainly experts I've spoken to, uh, and the general consensus within the South African press. However, when you listen through uh, Judge Masipa's uh, lengthy uh, statement explaining her sentencing, she did say that she has uh, wide discretion and this is an individual case that doesn't require her to stick to that 15-year minimum. And so when our audience might be hearing 15-year minimum, and she went for six, uh, they might be scratching their heads. But here in South African law, if a judge feels there are substantial circumstances at play, they can do less than that 15 years. Uh, some things she said towards the end of that uh, sentencing uh, uh, that she laid out was that, in fact, uh, the punishment, though Pistorius's team had asked for a non-custodial sentence, uh, in other words, for him to do community service or continue under house arrest, she said that you know, punishment is not what you choose to do. It is what is imposed on you. It's often uncomfortable and, and not ideal. Uh, and she said a custodial sentence, meaning going to prison, uh, a lengthy one, wouldn't be appropriate and wouldn't serve justice in this matter, according to her. And on that note, we end our afternoon update, but there's more news online at www.barbadosday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper or email updates, or you can like us on Facebook. We also, if you're moving around Barbados today this afternoon, on Izumi Media in bus terminals, or screenplay in supermarkets or gas stations near you. You can also check us out on Channel 99, that's on Flow TV, or Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Kmar Jordan. Enjoy your afternoon and be sure to join Mark Claire Williams later on this evening at around 6 o'clock. Thank you.